Now, have you ever had a craving for chocolate? Chocolate cravings are challenging in the inner battle they create between a person's head and their stomach. Your head says you probably shouldn't eat it, but your stomach reminds you that it will taste so good. See if this scene sounds familiar. You want chocolate, but you don't want the extra calories. But when you really think about it, what harm would a little taste do? You reassure yourself, I have willpower. I can have just a taste of chocolate, satisfy my craving, and I won't have any more. So you take a little nibble and it tastes so good. Oh, it tastes so good. Now since you've already broken your diet, you might as well eat a little more. Pretty soon you've eaten half of the chocolate by nibbling. Perhaps you're feeling a little guilty. You tell yourself, I don't want to eat any more chocolate. You also don't want to be tempted to eat more chocolate later, so therefore it makes perfect sense to finish eating all the chocolate now. That way you won't have to worry about it later. Now this, this lesson is all about credit cards, so it makes perfect sense to talk about chocolate, doesn't it? You see, credit cards are a lot like chocolate. If you don't use your credit cards very often or you eat too much chocolate, you'll probably be okay. But like chocolate, credit cards exist on a slippery slope. The more you use them, the easier it is to use them again. If you eventually find yourself where you've overdone it with credit cards, you could spend a lifetime trying to pay them off, just as you could spend a lifetime trying to work off the extra padding around your middle from chocolate. Now, we don't want to turn people off here. We're not saying everyone has or will get into trouble with credit cards. If you've never had the credit card blues, congratulations. Even if you've never fallen into the minimum payment, we encourage you to study this course anyway. Just like the analogy of fire, credit cards could still burn you one day if you aren't careful, even if you pay them off every month. Now, perhaps there was a time when you decided that credit cards would only be used for emergencies. Your definite emergency included items like surprise car repairs and such like that. Over time, however, your definition of emergency evolves. After a while, a sale at the mall before payday qualifies as an emergency. Perhaps eventually your definition of emergency could include, I want to go out to dinner and have fun, but my wallet says no. Do you have any credit cards? Chances are you do, since in the United States alone there are over 1 billion credit cards in circulation. 1 billion credit cards. That's almost 4 credit cards for every man, woman, and child in the country. Now we assume that most of the 50 million grade school and younger kids don't have credit cards, so that means that some of us have many more than 4. For many of us, credit cards have become a reflex, an automatic way we pay when we are shopping at certain stores and when we spend more than a certain dollar amount. You could say credit cards are a habit. Some habits are good and some are bad. As with any habit, it can be beneficial to ask why now and then. We hope, after looking through this course, that you will ask yourself, why do I need credit cards? Most of us have probably never even question the reason why we have or use credit cards. They seem like a normal and necessary part of our financial life. It's interesting when you consider, however, that credit cards have really only been around since about the mid-60s. Then, when you saw someone using a credit card, it was a novelty. It wasn't until about the mid-80s mid that credit cards really became prevalent. Now credit cards are used so frequently it's almost a novelty to see someone using cash. There is one simple reason why most people accept and use credit cards so willingly. The credit industry has been very successful marketing their products. You've seen the commercials, MasterCard, it's smart money. You don't leave home without it. We are taught to think it, it is a good financial strategy to use credit cards at the grocery store because it allows us to track our spending. A big part of the successful credit card marketing has been the sheer volume and the amount of it. Credit card companies are always the biggest advertisers during big TV shows. And how about all the mail we get? Many of us get several offers a week. According to Consumer Reports, credit card advertising has been very successful in shaping our thinking. We've been told that credit cards help us enjoy life more, help us get the finer things in life. Credit cards are marketed as tools of the financial savvy. We are led to believe that credit cards will somehow improve our financial lives when in reality, instead of helping us financially, credit cards actually rob typical families of the ability to achieve true financial freedom. In other words, for most people, if you use credit cards on a regular basis, you probably will never be able to retire. Now, does this seem a little harsh? Maybe. Let me put it 
to you in another way. You have a choice. You can continue using credit cards or you can, can begin to build real wealth well such that you can become financially free. Now these statements seem a little preposterous, don't they? That's okay to admit it because most people in our courses don't believe it at first either. But it is absolutely true. For most people, credit cards do nothing but drain future wealth. Let us show you how. Now, as you remember, a typical SpendSmart family is finding an extra $427, which is a 10% SpendSmart factory factor every month. Now we def define financial freedom as a million or more in net worth and as you go through this course you're going to see that the typical family would have an extra 427 if they would just break the credit card habit. Without credit cards our typical family would have an extra 427. With that they could invest in their debt and achieve true financial freedom. Now according to CardWeb a Frederick, Maryland firm specializing in online publication of credit card information trends and statistics says the average household owed in at the end of like 2000 owed about 6000 on their credit cards like other debt credit card debt has risen over the last few years um, they say there's about 80 million households with at least one credit card with an average household balance, average balance of about $8,013. And it's actually higher than that right now. These statistics are off by probably three to four years. But it's staggering numbers. And so, you know, there's 100 million households with credit cards. Half of them are paying them, actually a third of them are paying them off each month and two thirds of them are not. So the average balance is actually more like thirteen to fourteen thousand for those people who are not. Now with credit cards, most people are doomed to a lifelong merry-go-round ride of using them, slowly paying them down, using them, slowly paying them down. They're the fastest route to financial disaster. So let's look at the big number, the billion credit cards in circulation. And spending on credit cards is over a trillion dollars a year in the United States. And that's a pretty massive number. So, when expenses grow faster than income, this is a financial disaster waiting to happen. Why do we have so many credit cards and use them so much? Maybe it's because credit cards are smart money. Maybe it's because we can earn free travel and other goodies with the awards programs. Maybe we like those cash back bonuses. Maybe we like the convenience. Maybe we like the prestige. Don't you think you were really special and you got your first gold card? Whatever we may think is the reason we have a wallet full of credit cards, there is one major factor that probably contributes to the large number of credit cards more than any other reason. And that is because there are so many in circulation today because credit card companies make it easy to get them. Now you've heard all the stories about dogs, cats, eight-year-old kids, deceased people being sent pre-approved credit cards in the mail. Obviously those are mistakes, but there are many people who get credit cards that you would never imagine. People with bankruptcies, bad credit, can easily get credit cards. And we'll talk about more about these people later, but let's continue with the discussion of why we have, why do we have so many credit cards. There's a deeper reason to consider. So why do credit card companies make it so easy to get credit cards? Well, quite simply because they're very profitable for the credit card companies. It's a simple fact, folks. Credit card industry is very profitable. We all think about Bill Gates as the richest man in the world, but do you know who the second richest Ameri American is? The um, person who owns MBNA, a credit card company that targets people with bad credit histories. Now you might wonder, how can one become wealthy by giving credit cards to bad credit risks? Well, they do very well because their customers tend to be people who have no choices. That is, they typically cannot get cards from other companies. So they are more likely not only to pay higher interest rates, but also higher fees and service charges. And this leads us to the four credit card company secrets. And there are four secrets and we're going to go through them one by one. So let's look at uh, credit card secret number one. Credit cards cost you money even if you pay them off in full each month. Now people assume the only costs they need to worry about with credit cards are interest rates, charges, and annual fees. 
They look for cars with no annual fees and no in, in an interest-free grace period so they don't have to pay interest rates if they plan on paying off the card each month. So people often ask us, if I, you know, I pay off my credit cards each month, so it's okay to use them, right? Well, first let us repeat. Our purpose is not to tell you what to do. But don't make the assumption that paying off your cards each month is the same as having no cost. Yes, it is true that with most cards, you won't pay interest charges if you pay off your card each month. There is, however, a hidden cost most people fail to realize. Here's the rest of the story. When you use a credit card, you spend more money than when you use cash. You spend more money when you use a credit card. This truth is so obvious when you think about it. Let's say you need to get some clothes. You decide to go shopping at the local mall. Do you think you will spend more money if you go shopping with $100 cash or if you take your credit cards? So even if you pay your bill off at the end of each month, you have less money left over at the end of the month because when you use your credit card to make purchases, you spend more than you would with cash. Therefore, credit cards cost you more. And think about this. If you have the money to pay off the credit card each month, why are you using the card in the first place? Did you know that when a retailer swipes your card, they are paying the credit card company 2-4% to of your purchase? That means if you spend $100, the store is going to give as much as $4 to Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, whoever. Now why would the retailer be willing to give money away? Well, retailers want you to use cards because they want you to spend as much money as possible. If it costs a retailer a couple percentage points of the sale, it is worth it because the sale will be much larger. How much larger? Well, in other words, how much do more do people spend when they use a credit card? Well, according to research, they spend as much as 212% of what they would have spent with cash. And most of us can relate to this. When you are shopping, counting out money at a checkout, it's a little painful, isn't it? Compared to whipping out that credit card, you bet it is. We don't think of it as $300 or whatever you're spending. We think of it as a few more bucks on my monthly payment. So maybe you've noticed also that you can now buy much more than groceries at the grocery store. You can buy videos, flowers, books. Again, these are higher priced, higher margin items. Wouldn't you agree it is more likely that you will make these impulse purchases when you are using a credit card? Let's go back to the clothing, clothes shopping trip example for a minute. If you use cash, you spend $100. If you use a credit card, you might spend as much as $212. Is it worth it to the retailer to pay the 2% fee to the credit card company? Well, you do the math. Scenario 1. Soon the retailer gets a 50% margin on the items you buy. That means for every dollar you spend, they keep 50 cents after paying the suppliers for the items. So with the $100 you walked in and paid for with cash, the retailer got to keep $50. Now, scenario number two. If you use your credit card and you spend 212 instead of the 100, how much does the retailer end up with? If the store pays the highest credit card fees, which might be, say, $8 on 212, and again, assuming a 50% margin, the store has $106 left after paying the wholesalers. And then they have an $8 fee, so they end up with $98. So it's worth it to the store to pay a percentage of the sale amount to the credit card companies. What would you prefer, to make $50 or pay $8 to make an extra $98? Well, retailers have, retailers have learned credit card users spend more money. It is obvious that they are trying to turn this fact into more profit. Have you ever noticed that stores have greatly increased their efforts to get you to use their cards? If they can get you to use their card instead of Visa or some bank card, then they keep all the fees and increase their profits. Often when you walk into a store, there is a table where some employee will encourage you to apply for their credit card and get instant approval. Retailers are also using many different bonuses to encourage people to use their cards. Now, they might offer a 10 to 25% discount on your first purchase. They might donate 1% of the purchase amounts to the school of your choice. You might get a 1% discount on all the purchases on their card. You know, don't get us wrong. We believe it is fine for businesses to make profits as long as they're ethical. And it is profits that drive the growth of credit cards. Retail stores are not in business for your convenience. They are in business to make a profit. 
they offer credit cards for one reason credit cards increase sales and increase sales means more profit so when they make these credit card offers don't be hypnotized by the bonus they are offering because that leads us to credit card secret number two there is no such thing as a free lunch there are so many credit card bonuses out there cash back donations to charity frequent flyer miles buyer points ask yourself a question do you really think the credit card companies are just giving these things away are they just such nice people that they want to be as generous as possible the reason credit card companies spend money on these things cash back frequent flyers and other promotions is because they know that additional credit card spending will more than pay for these promotions so again you have to let the facts rule here which takes us to our next point credit card secret number three minimum payments are designed to keep you in debt forever minimum payments are funny things some people always make minimum payments some people pay off their credit cards every month most of us are somewhere in between these extremes has there ever been a time when you were short on money and you were glad that you could just pay the minimum amount minimum payments are convenient because they're easy typically we analyze our financial situation based on how much money we have left over at the end of the month minimum pay payments trick us into thinking that we have more money than we do now we all know that minimum payments mean we pay more interest but it's not that much interest is it in our courses we always ask people the following question if you spend two thousand dollar on your dollars on your seventeen point nine percent credit card and make minimum payments how long does it take to pay off the debt most people will say it'll take between five and ten years with minimum payments well hold on to your hat folks because the rest of the story is when you make minimum payments on a 17.9% credit card with a $2,000 balance, it takes 30 years and 5 months to pay it off. And you will make a total of $6,827 in payments, spending $4,827 in interest. Now, for those of you who are getting your slide rules or your financial calculators out, there's, there's a number of unique factors inherent in credit card or revolving debt that make this different from a mortgage or a car payment. The first factor to recognize with credit cards is that minimum payments are not necessarily level payments. Have you ever noticed that your minimum payments on a credit card go up or down as your balance goes up or down? Minimum payments on credit cards are typically based on the current balance. They are calculated as a percentage of the balance. Minimum payments are generally two to three percent of the balance. So in this example we used a minimum payment of two percent with a two thousand dollar debt the minimum payment is therefore forty dollars if you make a forty dollar payment every month then the two thousand dollar debt is paid off in seven years and nine months but forty dollars is the minimum payment on the first month only after you've made the first minimum payment of forty dollars you no longer owe two thousand The forty dollar payment paid for thirty dollars of interest and ten dollars of principal so after the first payment, the balance is now $1,990. Since minimum payments amounts are calculated as a percentage of the balance, your next payment is now $39.80. Are you beginning to see why minimum payments on credit cards can stretch your payment out for years or even decades? If you are on time with your payments and you are slowly paying down your debt, what rewards are you given? You are rewarded with reduced payments that allow you to continue paying on the debt for even longer. If you think about the math, you will realize that you can never pay off a debt by only paying a percentage of the balance each month. At some point, you will have to pay more than 2% of the balance on the, or the debt will continue forever. All credit cards have a minimum payment amount, usually in the range of $10 to $25. Eventually, if you are making minimum payments, your payment will be more than 2% of the balance, but it will still take you 30 or 40 years to pay it off. For many people who make minimum payments, it can actually take even longer to pay off a debt. There are other factors that can increase the amount of time that it takes to pay off this $2,000 credit card debt. These factors include take a month off promotions, late charges and penalties, and a annual membership fees. When one is making minimum payments, there is no room for error and these other factors come into play. 
Have you ever received your credit card statement with a notice that says, take a month off on us? Sometimes, especially around the holidays, if you have kept current on your payments, you are given a month off from your payment. Do you think the credit card companies make this offer simply in the spirit of the season? Or do you think they are motivated by the additional interest they will earn? You can take a month off from payments, but your interest never even takes a day off. Your balance actually goes up and you didn't buy anything. So how about late charges and penalties? Most people don't end up having these fees assessed, but would you agree that someone who is making minimum payments is more likely to have such a tight budget that they miss a payment every once in a while? Credit card companies make the most money from clients who make minimum payments. If someone makes minimum payments on their credit cards, they keep their debt longer and therefore pay more interest and more fees. All of this interest and fees are money that you could be investing in your debt. Don't let the credit card companies take it. What should be going, you know, don't let them take what should be going toward your financial future. Minimum payments are a dual-edged sword, meaning they can be good or bad for you. If in a month or two your available cash is extra tight, minimum payments can be a blessing. But if you fall into the habit of making minimum payments, like any habit, it can be difficult to change. So keep that in mind. Regardless of your income, you must avoid minimum payments at all costs or you'd stand the chance of losing your financial future. So get started today with your Invest in Your Debt program and break the bonds of minimum payments. After following IYD for a short time, you'll be free of minimum payments forever. And once you break free, you'll be able to invest in your debt at a maximum level. And once you invest in your debt, you'll be able to achieve true financial freedom. But we've said it before, it's a choice. You can ignore all of this information, continue making minimum payments, and face a lifetime of financial bondage. Or you can invest in your debt, break the cycle, and look forward to financial freedom. Which leads us to credit card secret number four. Credit card companies that offer you a card when no one else will are not your friend. And this last secret goes against what you would intuitively think. Imagine this scenario if you have not already experienced it. Money is tight in your family. Perhaps your credit cards are charged to their limit and you are worried about the what-if scenarios. You know, what if I need new tires on the car? Or what if the kids get a bunch of cavities, etc.? Maybe you send in a few credit card applications you got by mail just in case you need them and find out that you are rejected for the new credit cards. You have reached your credit limit or maybe you have some bad credit history. Then one day you get another credit card application and you send it in hoping you will get lucky. A couple of weeks later a brand new credit card arrives in the mail ready to solve your financial problems. You feel like the luckiest person around because now you have a financial safety net again. Our initial thoughts might be, boy, what a great credit card company. They gave me a chance when no one else would. Little do you realize that you are the one doing the credit card company the favor. The fastest growing segment of the credit card industry is what is known as the subprime segment. Subprime refers to people who are not qualified for newer additional credit under typical credit guidelines. Now, the reasons people would not qualify will vary, but they might include bad credit histories, a high debt-to-income ratio, or low income. Now, why are people who are generally not creditworthy the fastest-growing segment of the credit card industries? Well, because many credit card industries make the bulk of their profits from subprime clients. And a number of credit card companies specialize in subprime clients. You might be familiar with some of these, such as MBNA, Providian, First USA, and others. Now, we would assume that clients who are in a tight financial situation don't have much disposable income. So how can a credit card company make money on clients who don't have much money? They make piles of money from subprime clients because these clients have no choice but to pay high costs. They're chasing, trying to improve their credit rating so they're not subprime anymore, and they're paying through the nose for it. So these companies that issue subprime cards may actually be hoping you break their rules so you can pay their fees. And they have a bunch of them. Most subprime cards have more rules than other cards and they have punitive interest in fees. Now do you know what punitive means when it comes to credit cards? Punitive means punishment. So when a credit card company charges you punitive interest in fees, they are punishing you for not following their rules. Now you may have gotten a card with a low introductory interest rate. 
Usually after a few months, you know that rate will go up to some constant rate. If, however, you are even one day late with a payment, the credit card company can raise your rate to a punitive level. According to CardWeb, punitive interest rates on cards are now as high as 32%, or 31.9. But that's not all. Late fees can be added to your account balance. Sometimes these fees can end up being hundreds of dollars. How can this happen? Well, if you are already in the position of only being able to make minimum payments, and now you have late fees added on, your, your late fees can be added to your minimum payment. If you are already having trouble making the minimum payment, and now it is increased with late fees, are you going to have an easier time making the new larger payment? Of course not. The next month, you will still be considered late because you haven't made the minimum payment. So what happens then? More late fees. But it gets even worse, folks. What if you are nearing your credit limit on a subprime card? If you go over the limit, you can then be charged additional punitive interest charges and fees. Many cards will let you go over the limit. It just gives them the opportunity to collect more fees. Since late charges are added to your balance, they too could push you over to the limit if you are close. It doesn't take more than a late payment or two or going over your limit just once to lock you into years of sky-high interest and fees. So if you get fed up with all these costs, can't you just transfer the balance to a different credit card company and be done with it? Usually not. Remember, the reason you got this subprime card is that you couldn't get a card from anyone else. Now that you're in trouble with your subprime card, your credit rating is even worse. Why would any other credit card company want your business now? Subprime cards are fool's gold. It seems great that you're able to get a card when no one else will give you one, but that is precisely the reason you should avoid these cards like the plague. It's a great catch-22. So, in summary, be very careful. Pay attention to these principles. Like any good business, the goal of credit card companies is to make a profit and maximize value for shareholders. Yes, businesses should serve their customers, but unless they make a profit, they won't be able to stay in business. So don't get angry at the credit card companies because they are trying to be good businesses. Just understand how their businesses operate and how they make money. That way, you can make sure that you minimize your costs and your money goes toward building your wealth instead of building the credit card company's profit profits. Hopefully these four secrets give you some insight that you didn't have before. The best approach to credit cards is to, cha to, to, is to change your financial life so you never need them again. Follow the linear math variable path process we teach and you can quickly reach a point where you never need a credit card again. And hopefully that will be soon. Thank you very much.